Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out some of my other content. So today I'm going to be sharing some of my tips for when learning to code and yeah, let's get right into it. When it comes to learning to code, I think before you even start, it's very, very important to ask yourself why you're doing it. Why are you learning to code? What is it that you're trying to achieve by picking up this skill? And I say this because if you don't have that drive and motivation outside of just coding, then it's going to be very difficult for you when you come across roadblocks, where some days you feel very I don't know, deflated. And so, yeah, it's very important for you to understand your purpose and why you're doing something in general. And that same mentality applies with coding. Start mapping that out. Like, what is it that you're trying to achieve by learning to code? Is it a job? Are you trying to be financially stable? Are you trying to get into an industry where there's flexible working? Whatever it is, you need to make that clear for yourself before starting to learn to code. Now for some of the technical, I guess, side of things. So a lot of the times people underestimate how hard learning how to code actually is. Um, some people find it easier than others. For me personally, the learning curve was absolutely steep. Like, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> so for me, coding did not come easy at all. Like, it took a long time for things to really start clicking for me. Some of the technical things that a lot of beginners run into is syntax errors. <laughs> Guys, the number of times I have spelt function wrong, or I've missed a colon, or um, the indentation wasn't right, Half the time, if not most of the time, when your code isn't working or when something's broken, oftentimes is a sy syntax error. Like, I make so many typos, which is quite ironic because I am a writer in general. Um, I always make spelling mistakes or I'll, when I'm writing one function, I've, I'll give it the right name, but then when I'm trying to call it, I'll spell it wrong. So then it's actually not calling the function that I made. All sorts of silly mistakes. Like I've been in situations at work where I'm so frustrated. I'm stuck on this one piece of code. I don't understand why it's not working. I'll get so flustered. And then someone else will come along, look at it and be like, oh yeah, you've just missed the colon. Oh, um, the indentation, you need to tab it again. Hi guys, this is not an ad. This is just a quick disclaimer. You might see a few of these clips scattered around in this video and as you can see my translator is still translating some of the things I was saying before this pop-up. The reason is because the British Sign Language is a language of its own and that means sometimes it takes my translator a bit longer to finish translating a sentence. Like it's so common so if you're starting out, you're going to make a lot of syntax, syntax errors and that's okay. Just be patient with yourself because oftentimes what you think the issue is, isn't actually as complicated as you think. So keep that in mind. If it's too overwhelming, like walk away from your desk or wherever it is you're working and, you know, come back, look at the screen again and just go line by line. And just, I talk to myself when I'm coding line by line, like, okay, this is what I'm importing. This is the library that I'm using. I'm creating this function because I need to do this, this and that, or I'm building this class because I need to, I need it to do this, this and that. Like I talk myself through things because I feel like if I can't tell myself a story or like I can't narrate what I'm doing, then it's harder for me to spot those mistakes. Keep it simple, stupid. And it sounds very patronizing and it sounds like, you know, why is that such a big deal? But seriously, keep it simple. If your function is doing like a million and one things, then you might not be approaching it the most effective way. Coding is just a tool that you're using to help you solve a problem. That's all it is. That's what it comes down to, in my opinion, in the end. It's literally you giving instructions to help you solve a problem that's been given to you or a problem that you are choosing to solve. That's, that's it. <laughs> like that's it and the sooner that clicks for you the easier things will get for you in some ways so when you're coding whether it's building a project whether you're following a tutorial just think to yourself what is it this section is doing like what is what is this line of code doing when i'm calling a function why am i doing it like this why am i approaching the problem like this like seriously break down what it is that you're trying to do because that will help you code things in a more simple way i say this but 
me, queen of overthinking, queen of overcomplicating, queen of giving myself a big fat mess for no reason. I'm still learning this. <laughs> There's so many instances where I'm at work and I've been given a ticket to do. I'll have that ticket and it's asking me to work on one feature. So tell me why I decide I'm gonna do a million and one things for one feature when I don't need to. Oftentimes I find myself overcomplicating things and then what would happen is I'd get flustered, I'd get pissed off, I'd get annoyed, I walk away from my desk and yeah, I just tell myself that my brain's broken and I don't know how to code. Like, there's so many instances where I feel like that and yeah, just please keep it simple. You don't need to have the fanciest code in the world to be good at coding and programming in general. Like, it's really not that deep. And I know it can be very intimidating at first and you feel like, oh yeah, the more code on my page, the better. As long as it gets the job done and it's sufficient and it's simple, everyone's happy. Before you even start writing your line of code, just think about what it is that you're solving. Because programming is problem solving, basically. You have been given something to figure out or to solve or to do in an efficient way and you are coming up with a system or a method to help you solve that. Approach coding from that angle, it makes things slightly more fun, it makes things slightly more um, palatable and easier to digest when you're coming across complicated concepts as you're learning to code. Speaking of making it fun, make code fun for you. Like One thing I, for me, right, when I'm trying to understand things and I will start like, expressing the side of me a bit more when I start doing like coding tutorials and projects on my channel but I like to make coding fun for myself I like to make learning fun for myself anyway like from when I used to revise at school um, when I used to prepare for exams I my notes I used to like add some humor into it just make it fun like even now when I'm when I was like learning how to code like I try to make it fun for myself and you can make it fun in terms of like the projects that you choose but you can also make it fun in terms of how you're learning concepts so like when i think of let's say html css javascript i think of html as like the skeleton so i'm just thinking like structure stability this this and that then i think of css making it looking cute and whatnot and then i think of like javascript as you know the orgs in my body you know keeping things going and keeping me running and yeah, I kind of approach it in that way. I know it sounds really basic, but I try to make it fun. Like, even within that, things like, you know, containers, padding, you know, I, I, I even try to link it to things like memes and vibes. I'm like, you know, with padding, it's like, oh my God, this is my space. This is my area. You can't do that to me. This is your space. This is your area. She can't do that to you. Try to make it fun for myself in that aspect. A lot of times we're learning to code through video tutorials, online resources, YouTube videos, etc, etc. Learning to code is like building up muscle memory. The more you do it, the, be the easier it is for you to remember and the better you get at it. It's not one of those, it's not like an English essay exam or whatever, where you just read it, memorize it, boom, you can do the exam. With coding, it's a bit like maths. So you have to keep doing it over and over again for things to start getting into your head and staying there. So when you're watching um, tutorials, make sure you're following along and pause as many times as you need to. It's very common to not understand exactly what the person in the video is saying straight away. Like I, when I'm watching video tutorials on coding or they're doing a project in a language that I'm learning, I'm always pausing because I'm like, wait, what did this guy say? What does he mean by this? What do you mean by that? I have to because for me, I already know like coding doesn't click for me very easily and I like to understand things before I move on. Otherwise, I just feel like I've breathed through it and nothing really stays in my head. So yeah, follow along when you're following these tutorials. Another thing that I found myself doing, which helps as tedious as it is, um, when I'm following a tutorial or when I'm actually working on a project, if there's something that I've come across that's new and I write a new piece of code, I will cut that bit out and rewrite it again and again and again. So say I've got like a chunk of code I've written, it works, it's great, cool, learn something new. Now I want it to stay in my head. So it's almost like back in school when you would write out your revision notes over and over again, well, for some of us, I do the same thing with coding sometimes. Like I will write, rewrite the same chunk of code over and over again, just so I can get used to, you know, the rhythm and the pattern of how I'm typing things out. And I use this method a lot when I was learning Python because of indentation. Python's indentation, yeah, 
it's too much pisses me off like your code will be fine but if the annotation is wrong <laughs> baby girl that thing's not working ask for help and this is something that <laughs> i was so resistant to but ask for help especially if it's someone that you're very comfortable asking help from i've asked so many people on social media like i'll literally tweet guys i'm stuck on this thing and i'm losing it and people dm me and be like hey what do you need help with oh i've done this before i can help you this this and that next minute i'm on a zoom call with someone that i've met on the internet like literally like 10 seconds ago and they've helped me fix a problem that if i hadn't asked them i would be stuck on for like two hours three hours four hours the whole day leave it alone never looking at it again you know ask for help because people are always willing to help that's one thing i do like about the tech community that i haven't seen in any other industry that i've been in so far people are so willing to help and there's so much information out there the more you ask for help earlier on the easier it is for you to like get things done and get things done well and it also gives you more time to reflect on some of the things that went wrong and how you can improve for next time speaking of things going wrong errors i kind of should have mentioned this earlier on but pay attention to your error messages because a lot of the times your error messages are giving you clues as to where your code is going wrong and it can actually give you a clue as to why it's going wrong and on top of that with your error messages and i still do this now i'll literally just copy and paste the error messages and chuck it on stack overflow because Chances are someone's already come across that issue. I see what the solution is. Okay, cool, I can solve it. Error messages are a great way to understand like where you're going wrong, which is the whole point of an error message. But I know it's very tempting to just ignore and be like, oh my gosh, I see red, oh my days. <laughs> I'm not looking at it. Um, so don't panic with error messages too much. I know it's frustrating, but actually read the message and understand what the message is trying to tell you and what i found is that the more error messages i used to get or still get the more i understand okay next time i know not to approach things this way because i could run into an error like this again you know i think ultimately you're always going to be learning i think people have this misconception when they're learning to code that after a certain period of time everything's going to work for you and everything is going to be like you know you're going to be a pro at it it doesn't work like that with learning to code is always going to be an ongoing process and that's something that i had to understand very early on and yeah like there's still things that i'm learning there's still things that i need to improve on there's still things i could do better and it's just embracing that constant iteration of okay i'm stuck solved it learned something new oh this is something new i can learn as well getting stuck learning over and over again it's always going to be like a process even now while i've got a job as a software engineer like i'm still learning so many new things like we're still working on different projects and we'll come across different frameworks different languages different ways to solve the problem and that's probably not going to stop <laughs> to be honest like i've been at my job like just over a year now and it doesn't look like it's going to slow down anytime soon in terms of what i'm learning and the pace i'm learning at and that's okay that's the cool thing about tech like things are always changing things are always adapting and you have to be able to keep up with that and it can be daunting it can be overwhelming but you're not the only one going through that trust me don't feel like everything's going to click for you overnight because it doesn't work like that you have to be consistent you have to be persistent coding learning to code is like building up muscle memory like i said like you have to keep doing it to get used to it and it's going to be frustrating for a good few months in my opinion like i think for me for the first like I don't know, six months it was so frustrating for me i was really struggling and it's only like with time and with practice and with experience that you know i'm starting to just embrace when i'm getting stuck on things and just embrace when i make progress and yeah it's just going to be an ongoing journey honestly so if you are watching this and you've hit a roadblock it's normal i'm sorry to say but you're gonna go through a lot of that and i'm just giving you a heads up in it i hope you guys found this useful don't forget to hit the subscribe button hit the like button leave a comment below and i'll see you in the next video bye